Today happens to be the 7th of March 2016 and it is the day that Kericho and Malindi decides. Choice March 7th. Let me go straight to introducing the panel that we have this morning and to my extreme left we have uh, Senator for Mombasa County that's Omar Hassan. Thank you for joining us. Next to him we have uh, Frank Moy who is a political analyst. Thank you for joining us too. We have Ambrose Weda who is a lawyer. Last but not least, we have a governance expert, and that's Javas Bigambo. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. And uh, let's, of course, focus on Kericho and Malindi. And I'll start, first of all, with you, Javas, as to why this particular election, unlike other by-elections that have been almost very low-key, this seems to have... Uh uh, a lot of stakes and even looking at the political bigwigs that have you know put their weight behind it uh, the reason for this uh pursuant to article 38 of the constitution of course read conjunctively with article 81 now the matter of the Kericho by election and malindi belongs to the people and we know that uh this thing has generated so much interest because of the high stakes and uh, the premium with which has been associated with this of course it's very unique because it's one of the few by-elections that has used so much money, money that could be used you know, in other areas had the governance, uh, you know, the people in leadership been more prudent. But also because we know very well that the politics at play uh, is the kind of politics that either will uh, keep uh, the side of the deputy president uh, elevated politically in terms of uh, his potential of future negotiations, and also to show whether there is emerging cracks within uh, the, the Rift Valley. And also, well, of course, I know that uh, later on, as my good friend Senator Omar will retort, I believe that the opposition coalition would really want to, uh, to have, uh, you know, can win in uh, Caricho, so that uh, we see the diminished nature of the politics of those who are controlling government today. All right. Uh, Senator Omar Hassan, would you agree that uh, it would be in the interest of the opposition for Kanu to, lead, to win? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to say what I told my brother Weda of off stage, of offset, that this by-election was extremely unnecessary. There's nothing extraordinary, unfortunately, about my brother, Senator, former Senator Keter, or even for that matter, Kasungu, uh, uh, Dan Kasungu. So you occasion a by-election and then drag yourselves through the mud unnecessarily. So, and the person who's been put on the spot here is nobody else but William Samuel Ruto. It, these are both his opponents. I don't think Keter is an extraordinary, 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 you know, professional that you needed him so badly in government to test your will so, so pr 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 close to the election. I, didn't need, I don't think you needed to, to create that kind of uh, excitement in the court uh, bastion of Malindi over the coast region unnecessarily because I don't think you, they, we, are, we, are, we have a deficit of professionals. For us, I think, as an opposition, we share morally in those who, who appear to stand on the same side in terms of the issues. Uh, I think some of the issues that are being articulated by the Kanu candidate uh, and the Mashinani uh, alliance is the same issues that we articulate on a, on a regular basis in the opposition, devolution, or theft, and issues of that nature. And why they are high stakes, you also might have realized that there was so much high stakes for the Nyongores and uh, even the Masongaleni by-elections. And when you talk about money, uh, the people of Masongaleni told me they have not seen as much money from particularly our, uh, our adversaries that they did then in, a, in a small little... In a, because he wanted to demonstrate that probably Kalonzo is losing grip. Mm -hmm. So I think every, every by-election has an impact. Because this, for let's say the Cod Coalition, reasonably has the stamina to maintain any momentum for the next 17 months to the elections. We, we, we are cut for this type of work. So, if, uh, so therefore, it is, it's, it is critical that Cod uh, wins it, uh, reclaims its, uh, seat, its ODM, uh, unquote, or reclaims the Malindi seat. And then, on, a, on account of that, we set the momentum towards uh, 2017. Okay. Frank, what, what would your opinion be, given that uh, possibly there are some who are saying that uh, the uh, elevation of Charles Keter to Energy CS was uh, the deputy president, first of all, trying to woo the voters in that area and, you know, keep them happy. Uh, but it seems to have taken a turn that was unexpected with uh, Kanu now stamping the authority and reminding uh, the people in that area that they're still relevant. Yeah, can, I, can I say something about that? Because I, I'm a bit privy to information I may not have. The word go, when Uhuru was first appointing his cabinet in 2013, Keter wanted to be in that cabinet. 
So I think fundamentally it had nothing for Well, I, I guess many politicians would want to be in the cabinet. Uh, absolutely but... not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I, I think uh, it spiraled up to something that nobody expected because uh, up before it, everybody thought that, I mean, appointing of Keter was like a, a, a goodwill show to the people of the South. It's almost like a reward. And then it was like, it was. I mean, you could see how competitive the Jubilee Alliance uh, nominations were, so it was almost like a sure ticket. But the backlash and what has come out of it was completely unexpected. And uh, it will have huge ramifications going forward, especially after these by-elections and going into 2017. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the biggest winner should, should by far be Kanu, because Kanu came from a nondescript non, non player. Now people are talking about Kanu. Kanu is getting more attention. And I mean, the forces coalescing around Kanu are getting stronger and stronger by the day. So it took everybody by surprise. Do you think this backlash to, to the party is uh, is it because the Kanu candidate is strong or is it because people are fed up with uh, Jubilee Alliance party and as a result anything will do I mean it's 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 boiled down to not about what the candidates offer or what do they bring to the table it's down to a more emotive subject <coughs> so people are now more about what Jubilee has not done or what they have failed to do than I mean what Paul Sang stands for or Aaron Chiruyot because they are not part of it's now a bigger battle than Aaron Chiriot and, 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 and Paul Sang. Mm -hmm. So it's become a battle of what should have been done, what ought to have been done, and how the people of especially Kericho and by large uh, South Rift are feeling should change. With okay. Government. Uh, Ambrose, this would look like it's a huge miscalculation by uh, the Deputy President and the government thinking that, you know, it's a walkover. But here we are now again seeing a backlash. No, I, I think the hula baloo about a huge backlash. Let's start with Kericho, a huge backlash and, and how this is going to happen. Uh, that has been generated. It happened in Homer Bay. When Okuda and um, uh, Kajuang, the young man. It was huge hula baloo. Raila has lost it. Things are gone until people went to vote. It is the same replay in Kericho. Those people are not foolish enough to go to opposition and uh, where Gideon is. It is only that Gideon Moy and Kanu found a chance to pay the deputy president who to pull the carpet under their heart. You know, deputy, uh, the deputy president ran away with the entire Kanu network and went with it and turned it into his own and made uh, people like Gideon Moy irrelevant. Now, it is their time to show uh, that they are still there. That's why they have poured huge money. But at the end of the day this evening, you will see the man, I, I saw the two candidates, you will see the man of Jubilee. If you see the two candidates, one belongs to the past. Some belongs to the era of Moi. You see the cock, you see the candidate, you say, Akuna. That is why the president himself. Because he wanted to be president, he was told, the first thing you do is to leave this kind of thing. When we see the cock and we hear can, we just fall sick because of the past. <laughs> so that is what Gideon is still trying to revive. And we are telling him, if you want anything, just leave the cock and Baba and Mama party, come up to the modern. So Karicho, in the evening, you will see it was all hula baloo about nothing. You believe man will romp home, although with the low margins. But you can see the vigor of uh, the deputy president because his political uh, strength is being tested. He's tested for strength and as a man who is also very strong. So he and, and muscle and I think he has also muscled enough, enough money. <coughs> uh, not as much as Moy and his people have but enough. So he was able to demonstrate. I think he will carry the day. Going to Malindi. Malindi was essentially uh, ODM and COD. Therefore it is very hard to retain. And they're indeed working very hard. And, you know, being the masters of propaganda, while well, they have poured propaganda down there, <laughs> I think uh, Jubilee, has, the, Jubilee has the best candidate. Very good, level-headed gentleman. Then they have somebody who's, uh, I would call a ruffian. But with the propaganda, they have diminished the chances of our Jubilee candidate. I was there last Monday, and uh, chances that Jubilee will, uh, will get it uh, become minimal. And you remember the big wigs went there, Raela went there with the propaganda and propaganda. And now somebody has arrested somebody and now he's making it worse for Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So uh, if they retain it, and chances are like they're likely to retain it. But Karicho, I can tell you. you All right, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to uh, Malindi, but for now, Javas, and we have uh, live images of the voting that's going on, which are coming on your screen inter intermittently. And of course, we'll be crossing over to our reporters who are live at the polling stations.
give you updates of what is happening like those are now live pictures of voting in malindi uh but jabas um do you agree with uh weather that kanu for example for, for starters is a jogo that maybe uh crowed and its crow is no longer being listened to and this has just been rhetoric with the hula baloo with people saying that you know kanu is finally uh having its head reared up do you think that is just rhetoric or is it the reality on the ground well going by what has been said self-evident in this by-election to completely write off Kano I think is to technically avoid the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, while we know very well that uh, Kano has been thoroughly diminished over the past years uh, since uh, it left <laughs> the reins of power, it is clear to any critical observer that Kano is being spruced up. And the person that is sprucing up Kano is none other than the Deputy President himself. By the failure you know, of the government, the Jubilee administration, and the deputy president himself to deliver on the promises they made to the people of, say, the, you know, the Rift Valley or the South Rift, etc., in Karicha itself, it has given Kanu the, the, the power, the space that Kanu badly needed. Mm -hmm. And if at all we uh, would have seen that there had been so much struggle you know, in this by election, then we would say that maybe Kanu can be written off completely. But now, when you look at the arithmetic, when you look at the showing during the, the rallies and during you know, all these campaigns, when you look at the kind of cash that has been, has been splashed in Caricho, of course going up against all election financing you know, regulations and expectations, you realize that Kano has got a fighting chance in, you know, in, uh, in this uh, Caricho by election. Now, while it may not necessarily uh, you know, win this expectedly so, because of the very many cards that mm -hmm. definitely you will agree that the deputy president has been kept so busy in this by-election a man used to very big yes, battles certainly. yes big battles he's been taken home and locked up in a very small battle that's beyond him and i think that only demonstrates that uh he needs to work even harder if at all, the entire block of the Rift Valley has still to be under his ambit. Okay. Frank, do you, th do you think that the, the deputy's president's involvement in Kericho uh, in such a huge manner, maybe is a reality check and a wake-up call, that things are not as they were? Because you'd have imagined, maybe he would have even done one or two trips and after that, <coughs> leave it to... Yeah, yeah, like I said earlier on, he probably did not expect this. It was, might have been a miscalculation. And I mean, look at the advantages that Jubilees have. They are the incumbent. They strode into last elections about 77% uh, win for Charles Keter. Now, to have reduced that to anything less than 77% and the insurgence that Kanu has done, the kind of crowds they have pulled, and now people are looking to have an alternative voice. Even going into 2017 now, before it was almost automatic, having a, 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 a URP ticket then and probably a Jubilee Alliance party going into 2017 was almost like a win. But going forth now, the battle will be won at the ballot because Kanu's been breathed life into. And they have very, they have, I mean, look at how they've done their, their, their campaigns. They had a well-oiled machinery very critical. They had good organizations and they had people who really believed that they need an alternative voice. So to be going into 2017, uh, Jubilee is still a very strong and formidable party and William Ruto has a lot of support still, but people are having an alternative voice, which would be critical. That if I get a Kanu nomination certificate, for example, in 2017, it's, 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 it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm out of this game. So okay. That's, that's it. Can I say something? Yes, Senator. It's pointing out to two things, that all is not well. In, in, in Rift Valley, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, William Ruto needs to get his act right immediately after this by-election. In fact, they, first and foremost, also have to stop this nonsense of appointing elected officials into cabinet. I think this should, in fact, I, I am thinking about whether it's feasible to propose a law that, that bears these this unnecessary expenses, both within terms, in terms of the human capital and the resource capital which is occasions by the state. But uh, secondly, whether my, my advice to you and the Jubilee Coalition, yeah. never underestimate anybody with residual political capacity. The, you might have issues with Khan, but Moi is still a revered name in most of Rift Valley. He is a, a barber there, whether you like it or not. He is a highly respected statesman of late. Um, no, he's non-controversial in the strictest sense of the word. He's one of the first few African leaders to have relinquished power, which was a very redeeming effect for him in terms of his legacy. I, I, do, I have uh, issues about his excesses during the, the Moi Kanu rule, but I can tell you as, a, as an elder, 
his name still still sends a bit of reverence across the Rift Valley. And this is not it's not your normal Isaac Ruto. This is a man who wielded state and has capacity. In fact, I Senator Lunyangupu, I'll be surprised if uh, Kanu, uh, I mean, if uh, William Ruto has more money than you.